creating the conversations and then sharing the conversations. Arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's play it forward. Real people, real stories. Episode number 433 is with actor Johnny Whitaker. Hey, Arrow, how's it going? Johnny Whitaker here. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Man, what a man you have been and, and grown into. How's everything going with you, guy? I'm doing great. One day at a time. Happy to be here. <laughs> That's so true, living it one day at a time, because I, I, I study meditation, and it's it's about being mindful of the presence of now. Hey, you know, you have one foot in the past and one foot in the in the future, then you're crapping on today. <laughs> so what is it like to be a part of this 50th anniversary of Sid and Marty Croft? Well, it is tons of fun. Or it's going to be tons of fun. Uh, Marty and Sid and Marty and myself, we've maintained a positive relationship low these 50 years. Um, Marty has always been a good supporter and uh, good friend. And, uh, I mean, come on, they're uh, next to uh, Disney. They're, you know, some of the best uh creators that uh you know especially brother creators that have ever existed yeah and and it was it, whatever they felt inside their imagination it was it was like they they brought everything to life and you got to be a part of that with with sigmund that's right well you see my understanding um here in california smoking marijuana has become legalized in 2018 yep um but when we were filming Sigmund, which was back in 1973, it was not as such, but Sid, I believe, was smoking something <laughs> and, <laughs> and was on the beach in his, in his truck um, surfing or doing something and, you know, was sitting back watching the waves and all of a sudden this seaweed started waving at him. And he went and grabbed the seaweed and threw it in the back of his car, drove over to Marty's house and said, Marty, this is our new show. This is Sigmund. Come and say hi to him. <laughs> and that's kind of how Sigmund got, uh, got its start. But, uh, you know, I was, I was lucky because I uh, had been quite a prolific actor even after Family Affair. I did four Disney movies and yeah. then got to star in my own film, Tom Sawyer, where I gave Jodie Foster her first on-screen kiss, <laughs> and she goes gay. Um, not my fault. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, then, uh, you know, I was at the top of my game. Marty calls my agent and says, what do you think about Johnny doing one of my new shows? And they discussed it, and for me to do it, I had to get some producer type of credit or, or money, so I got 5% of Sigmund. Wow. And, um, you know, as a 13-year-old young man, that was quite a feat, and I got to uh, help choose my co-star, Scott Colden. We just filmed a, a, a Disney special uh mystery in Dracula's castle the summer before and so when he came into the room I said hey how is it going Scott and uh, I got to hire him wow so how what I mean, this is way before uh, CGI how did the set look and and what, what was there what wasn't there because I mean I I love studying those 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 old frames in the way of going and because you had to use your imagination Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, no CGI. Um, it was all done, uh, well, there was a little bit of, um, you know, cutting and pasting where, like, uh, uh, Rip Taylor in the second season came in to be the uh, sea genie mm -hmm. that came out of a, a seashell, and uh, he uh, would zap us here and zap us there and, you know, kind of magically appear and disappear. So, you know, the, we had those little uh, tricks, but um, most, I mean, the, the costumes were actual uh, puppets 
that the actors themselves would um, give the lines as a voice from heaven or in another room would be speaking for the different characters. And we had two great uh, voice men. Um, uh, Walker Edmiston was the voice of Sigmund. Wow. Wow. But Billy Barty was the actor inside of the Sigma costume. I, I, I can't imagine what it was like to be inside that costume underneath those hot lights. It was, I mean, I, I felt really bad, but um, luckily, you know, the scenes wouldn't last more than a few minutes um, under the light, and as soon as they say cut, the, um, you know... The um, people were there to unzip and let them out and breathe and give them water. And, uh, you know, uh, Billy Barty didn't, or any of the characters, they would just wear their bathing suits, <laughs> um, shorts, and a T-shirt, you know, inside. And um, But it was lots of fun. I, I, I enjoyed the three years that uh, we got to film Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. And this Saturday, May 21st, in Orinda, California, we're going to have uh, the first ever CrossCon. Yes. And Orinda is just uh, east of, it's on in the East Bay near San Francisco, but actually nearer to Oakland. And I'm hoping that we're going to have some live streaming event that's going to be available. And uh, I'm going to definitely have a couple of live uh, deals on my uh, Pinterest or whatever I've got. I forget uh, whatever the deal is that I have. But, you know, I will definitely be doing some streaming. You can become a Twitter. Um, <laughs> follow me on uh, Twitter. And um, I forget. I think it's John Whitaker Jr., um, my Twitter feed. But uh, it's, uh, we're going to, you know, I'll be there the whole time from 11 in the morning till 10 at night. We're going to watch the movie uh, version of uh, uh, Land, uh, or uh, the movie version of Puffin Stuff. Oh, wow. With uh, Mama Cat playing the witch. And, um,. Then you're going to have an episode of Sigmund you're going to get to see. And I'm sure an episode of Lidsville and an episode of Land of the Lost because Wesley Ewer and Kathleen Coleman from Land of the Lost are going to be there. And uh, Butch Patrick from Lidsville is going to be there. So we're going to have a, a lots of fun time. All of these shows that you're mentioning bring back so many memories. And and the thing is, is that what I love about HDTV these days is the fact that a lot of these shows are still being watched and kids today are discovering what you once did. Do, do, do the younger adults reach out to you saying, I just watched your show? Well, it's funny, you know, um, uh, Sigmund, they did uh, one season of uh, a reboot with Amazon Prime, and I got to be a part of that. And we have a, a whole new generation, but uh, became just, it was lots of fun to come back and, and kind of be revered mm -hmm. uh, 45 years later um, from the work that we did. But, um, being able to be a part of, of this whole, you know, nostalgia, you know, old actors, we don't die, we just go to con, <laughs> an autograph show. <laughs> so true. So now, this is going to have to become an annual thing, CroftCon, in, in, in the San Francisco area, because, I mean, first of all, it shocks me that there hasn't been anything like this before. Right, and... Um, we're not exactly sure what's going to happen, but we'll see how this, this success goes. And uh, if it is successful, I'm sure that we will uh, do more and have more and have a good time. 
One of the things that listeners need to know about you is your commitment to the community. I mean, you are so dedicated to real people with 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 substance abuse problems. I, th- to be that open with with your heart, where where was that seed first planted, and and how are you letting letting it grow today? Well, basically, uh, when I was sixteen. Amisa Jones, who played Buffy in Family Affair, yep. died of a drug and, a drug and alcohol overdose. Um, I, at the time, was a good Mormon boy um, and felt badly. Um, hadn't had much exposure to drugs and alcohol because of my LDS Mormon, you know, upbringing. But um, later on in life, you know, I, I, I decided that I need to relax a little bit and so I went back to high school finished uh, my junior and senior year and um, then uh, went to Brigham Young University for two semesters and then went on a mission for the LDS yes. the Mormon faith to Portugal for two years came home and met a pretty uh, uh, model uh, and got married, and uh, unfortunately, four years later, she didn't like me anymore, no. <laughs> and uh, divorced me to marry the man who gave me my bachelor party, <laughs> and, um, you know, went on to uh, uh, have another relationship, which uh, was pretty serious and failed. And uh, I lost all faith in a higher power and in God, and I made a choice to go to the dark side, yeah. Skywalker. And um, was there for about 10 years, and my family said, that's enough. Uh, I had uh, three nephews. They were two, three, and four years old. And... Uh, was told I could not spend any time with them and they could never be in my car wow. until I had nine months clean and sober. So I decided I had to uh, to do that. And so I got clean and sober and uh, 24 years ago I got clean and sober and 20 years ago I decided to uh, dedicate my life and you know my future to uh, helping support other people who had my disease of addiction. Every uh, August 31st, we have uh, Overdose Awareness Day, International Overdose Awareness Day. And this year on September 3rd, I'm going to have um, the third annual, um, uh, going to have a, a Zoom meeting with friends and family and people who from all over the country a celebration of lives lost and lives recovered um september is recovery month in the united states and since the last day of august is uh, overdose awareness the first part we're going to celebrate the lives of people who we've lost one of them is of course anisa jones uh another is dana plato who was a friend of mine yes um and uh, then uh, other people, such as uh, the young woman who played the oldest sister in uh, Eight is Enough, that is um, Lonnie O'Grady, and she died of an overdose. Mm. And she was like a sister to me. And uh, Michael Douglas's younger half brother, Eric Douglas, and I were good friends and party, party buddies. And uh, unfortunately, he died of a, of a cocaine overdose. Oh, wow. But every uh, this year, we're going to, uh, if you, you know, go to johnnywhitaker.com or uh, actually and get more information there. You can see and sign up and, and uh, send me information, and we will be glad to celebrate the lives of a lost loved one or friend of yours. On iHeartRadio, I have a channel that's called Creativity is the Addiction because I am convinced that creativity is an addiction and people don't understand it, which is the reason why they choose the alcohol or the drugs and things like that. How do you feel about that, Johnny? Well, you know, uh, addiction uh, comes in four different ways. One uh, is 
if you are brought up in uh, a social environment where drugs and alcohol are openly used, um, that's one way. I'm Irish, English, French, and German, so um, I have a propensity for liking alcohol. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your genes are another way. Um, the third way is if you've been through any major trauma in your life, especially um, rob robbery, uh, if you've seen someone be shot or killed in front of you, so those who were involved in war, um, those are all um, what we in the behavioral health sciences have accepted for about the last 50 years. And then in the last, well, since 2018, came up with the loneliness and people who um, were outcast and not um, real members of society. And we can use that for uh, the Native American yep. society who, you know, for 600 years have been subjugated by the white man and forced onto, um, onto reservations and the African American community which have been, uh, you know, 500 years ago, the slavery up until uh, recently, and, you know, emotionally enslaved in many areas up until the 60s. Um, and, uh, you know, the Latino, Hispanics, especially the non-English uh, speaking, and the LGBTQ2IA plus community uh, is a big one, and, and you know, not always being accepted, um, one of the reasons that these groups of people uh, have a stronger propensity toward uh, addiction. Um, and if it has to do with, you know, we have to be smart because, you know, you can make a crack pipe out of just about anything. Yep. <laughs> so true. So true. And uh, so you have to have some smarts. Or, you know, when you really want something, you're going to find a way to get it. And, um, you know, that's just uh, the way it goes. Wow. I could talk to you all day. Congratulations on CroftCon. Please come back to this show anytime in the future, Johnny. I'll be very happy to. And uh, God bless. And, you know, namaste. I love However it. you do it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Excellent. I'm I'm there with you, trying to trying to stay in the present. You bet, you buddy. Mindful. You bet. You be brilliant today, okay? Will do. <laughs>